Hi, in San Francisco. Welcome to the Adventure Zone. I was about to start introducing us, but I, everybody here is dressed like our characters, so I think that would be unnecessary. Uh, so, oh, wait, real quick. Before we get started, before we get into anything, can we get some house lights up, please? Yeah, I want to see that cosplay. Yeah, see it. Anybody Whoa. Up? If you're in cosplay, stand up. Stand up. Shit, yeah. 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 You wild animals. Oh, yeah. Okay, now we haven't done this before, but if you think you are dressed as the most deep cut esoteric character, <laughs> stay standing up. <laughs> Boylan, we got a Boylan that's boy very good. Fantasy Costco. We got somebody dressed up as the Fantasy Costco. We got a boy very fish. Good. There's a Steven up there. Yeah, hell yeah. Very good. <laughs> oh, yes. All right, let's get those house lights off. I'm uh, shaking with fear. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Uh, there they go, and there they're gone. Just me and my 20 closest friends. It's imperative that you all don't yell things at the stage during the show. We've never we announced that at the, be- at the beginning of the show, but yeah. a lot of people want to yell suggestions for cool spells. They, they want to yell the and rules. And we don't do cool spells. Well, Justin does. They want to yell the rules of D&D. We used to have somebody in our first couple live shows, we oh, actually yeah. appointed, what, what do we call it, the archivist? archivist. archivist. Yeah. Which was somebody to sit in the audience with the D&D player's handbook and correct us on the rules. What the fuck were we thinking? Yeah. (laughs) We would do an hour and a half, and 88 minutes of it was the person correcting us. Yeah, I remember when we stopped, because at a show we did in L.A., the archivist was tragically wedgied to death. (laughs) And we'll always remember you, Dylan, wherever you may be. I presume hell, but thank you. For all your help. Also, that's not going to be a cool watch for them. Yeah, that's not fun for them. They paid their money. All right, I'm in basically a corset, so let's, let's move it along. Uh, all right, let's get started. <laughs> your adventure begins, as almost all of our live adventures begin, with a letter. You each received it in the mail several days ago. It's been nearly a year. Spoilers for uh, Taz Balance. <laughs> Uh, since the day of story and song, and still your... It was a rough day, y'all. You don't got to cheer for that. Um, And still your inboxes remain in a constant state of being blown up. But this letter caught your eye solely because of who sent it. It read, Hey, gang, it's your captain here. Captain Boy! Uh, your former captain, I should say. You've all been off my payroll for some time, but I hope you still have some fondness for me because I've got kind of a big ask for you today. I've fallen into a spot of trouble. See, I've run up some debts with some unsavory characters all across the Sword Coast, and they've come to collect. I'm a bit low on liquid assets at the moment, which, as you can imagine, they're not terribly pleased about. Fortunately, I've found a way to take care of the situation. No, Taco, it doesn't involve killing all of them in a huge and fiery explosion. I found, I found a way to pay them back and then some. During my many travels on the waters of this wonderful world, I found a sunken ship that's chock full of treasure for the taking. Horror! Unfortunately, I wasn't able to recover it on my own. I sail by myself most of the time and... And though my yacht is a capable vessel, hoisting wreckage is a bit above my considerable capabilities. So I'm writing in the hopes that you'll be willing to sail with me back out to the wreckage. No. 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 Thanks for coming, everybody. Uh, Thanks to the Warfield. We love you, San Francisco. Uh, I hope you'll be willing to sail with me back out to the wreckage and recover it as a team for old time's sake. Once I money. Once I pay back We're my... We're not talking. I just, this is a letter. This is a letter. And money? It's actually a magic letter. Um, like the Harry Potter magic letters. Uh-huh. Uh, once I pay back my debtors, you're welcome to split the remainder. It should be enough, uh, more than enough for each of you to buy your own boats, if you wish. I cannot recommend it enough. There are few investments in this life that are wiser than buying a big, big boat. <laughs> 
I'll be casting off from the docks at West Break in three days. I sincerely hope you all will be aboard when I do. Your friend, Davenport. I'm already there. <laughs> okay, I know what he said, but hear me out. I have another plan. We find all the pirates that he owes money to, and we kill them all in a fiery explosion. Now hear me out. Oh, now, but if wait, I may, and this isn't usually Magnus's thing, but maybe there's a voice in my head called Travis. I don't know, random name. We wait till all the pirates are together to collect the money. Yes. Then we kill all of them, keep the money. <laughs> I say we let them go. If y'all want, I can press Control A and delete everything in this document. No, 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 no. Let's I, do it. Let's I just do. recently did a game with Chris Perkins, and there was a part where they were walking to the mm, next thing. So and sorry, he was, I fucking get it. Okay, but, I'm not and Chris he said, Perkins. "Well, I'm just saying, Chris Perkins is a real pro." And uh, he said as they were walking, like, so what do you do as you walk there? And I was like, what? What do you mean? <laughs> no, you're just there. <laughs> we're just there. You all arrive at the West Break docks at the appointed time and find a lively scene waiting for you. Despite the fact that most of the docks aren't in operation, many lies shattered, you assume, from the hunger's attack nearly one year ago. Spoilers for Tez Balance. A dozen small fishing vessels are preparing to uh, depart on their daily trips into the nearby reefs. Amidst the hubbub of these preparations, you spot one another near the central dock. I don't know how often you three actually meet up these days. What is this? Every other month. Wow. Pro- approximately. Yeah, yeah, we get together, play a little euchre. Don't you Fan- need... Fantasy euchre. Don't fantasy worry. Fantasy euchre. Who's, yeah. your, who's your fourth? Uh, the fourth is... Uh, Rotates. You could name any character right now and get a cheer from the audience. Daryl! No, absolutely not. Don't applaud that. That doesn't make sense. You all have to set a higher bar for us. <laughs> we can't just say the names of characters. Or Maybe it's the flaming, raging, poisoning sword of doom. Stop. Maybe it's the Millennium Falcon. <laughs> Maybe. What? Just want, uh, something. Aubrey else. shows up and plays with okay. us. Okay. You. It's all one universe. I'm stopping this right now. You hear a loud "Ahoy!" Come. From, Ahoy! Come from the docks in front of you. Travis gave us a speech literally 30 seconds before we came on, which was, and I quote, let's try to make sure Griffin can get through his introduction. Let's not interrupt. But let's then I got to be a much. pirate. He's just bloviating bullshit. Let's just let the little kid talk, and then we'll do some other junk. No, I'm loving it. I have barely n- anything prepared. If- okay, fine. Uh, you hear a loud ahoy come from the docks in front of you from the largest and nicest ship in the harbor. It's a long vessel with a solid wood construction painted a glistening pearl color. Two ruby red sails at the center and stern of the ship are raised, though you see some imposing figure on the ship beginning the process of untying their bindings, preparing to raise the anchor. It's a beautiful boat. Through, uh, th- towards the rear of the ship, you notice some patches uh, of unpainted wood covering up some considerable damage with scorch marks barely peeking out from behind them. Can I roll a history check to see if I recognize the symbols on the boat? Sure. It's an 18 plus 5. So I made them up, pretty much. Uh, The symbols on the boat, there's just one. It's a name painted on the side. (laughs) Daryl! And is he able to read it? He is. It says, the Wave Smasher. Mm, very good. Very good. You take it that Davin... With that role, you assume that Davenport has sort of adopted a certain naming convention for... Yeah. All You know, ships. it's funny. In my head, I had the words wave humper in, yeah. in there. Oh, I like, I like the, yours Oh, I'm better. sorry. I misread. Did you? Yeah, because the font... Let me increase the font size. It says wave humper. Okay, good. I thought it said might say wave humper. And bounding down the gangplank, you see Davenport. At least, you presume it's Davenport. A year at sea has changed his aesthetic dramatically. He's got long, unkempt gray hair now, gathered in two sections in bearded tails. And peeking out from behind that hair, you see an impressive salt-and-pepper goatee. Your once neat and tidy captain has become a bit of a sea dog in the year since you last saw him. Now, does he look more like Dad or Captain Ron? Captain Ron. Oh, thank you. Uh, and he yells as he approaches you, I, I knew I could count on you three. How the hell are you? 
pretty fucking good. <laughs> uh, we're very well. Uh, how, th- it sounds like things are not going great with you, though, my man. Oh, yeah, the debts are so much of them, and... Yeah. It's going to be great, though, when I don't have the debts anymore because oh, of the yeah. adventure that yeah. we're yeah, going to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How come you didn't parlay your uh, world-saving success into fame and fortune? Spin it. Oh, spin it. You spent your credentials and <laughs> you spent your reputation? We and got paid? No. Not uh, as such. Just the licensing. Um, oh, right. And merch... Davenport says, uh, it's just going to be us, I think. Lucretia responded and said she's finishing up Neverwinter for a big reopening ceremony. She offered to send some money instead, which was awfully nice of her. Barry and Loop uh, didn't respond at all, which honestly, I don't really know what I was expecting there. Um, (laughs) Another figure comes down the gangplank from Davenport's ship. She's uh, an orc wearing a black duster over a white linen shirt and ratty brown pants with an eye patch over one of her scarred up eyes. She's large enough to carry what appears to be a moderately sized ship's cannon strapped to her back. On on her hip is a long cutlass in a plain black scabbard. She approaches your party and she says, uh, wind's finally in our favor. Ahoy! Ahoy. Par! She says, sorry, what am I thinking? Ahoy, 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 ahoy. ahoy. Wind's, finally, <laughs> wind's finally in our favor, Captain. We should set sail before we lose our window. And then she gives you all each one more round of the goodbye, ahoy. Sure. Bahoy. <laughs> Bahoy. <laughs> you know, pirates have 37 words for ahoy. Uh, and but she, no word for money. Think about it. Mm. <laughs> And she walks back onto the ship, and Davenport says... Uh, Who was that? Well, that's, uh, that's Orla. She's a local merc that offered to come along for the journey. Oh, sorry, I'm just watching or- pieces of cosplay just falling. It's really fucking hot. It is, sure is. hotter than hell. Fuck! Yeah. <laughs> it's like an after-party at Gen Con in here. <laughs> Says she's a local merc that offered to come along for the journey. I hired her in case the rest of you didn't actually show up, which I don't oh, cool. really think you can blame me for. Fair. Um, uh, you all ready to head out? We'll be gone for a couple of days, and convenience stores are hard to come by on the open ocean. Um, I assume with vehicle proficiency, I know a lot about boats. What's the left side called? That's the port. Port. You helped him. I know aft... This is not password. I know aft and stern, port and starboard. After a full day of relatively and literal smooth sailing, uh, night falls and Davenport summons your party below decks for a nice meal he's prepared. He removes the lid off a steaming pot of seafood stew, which he delivers to each of you around the dining table in the galley, alongside a hunk of day-old but still relatively tasty bread. Magnus is already talking about how the sea has changed him. Sure. Yeah. How his time out here in oh, the open ocean can really get to someone, you know, like a lot of that. Ocean friendship bracelets, which yeah. is sort of a new concept. A lot of like, developing. oh, I've really found myself. You know, I thought I knew what it meant to be Magnus, but he. A lot of that, and yeah. it's all horseshit. Sure. <laughs> Over dinner, Davenport says, So, uh, how's life post interdimensional adventures treating each of you? Ah, the kids are a pain in the ass. Whoa. Whoa. That was not a character voice. That was me talking about you oh. guys. <laughs> Charming. Happy Father's Day weekend. Uh, That's why I can do it. Charming. Uh, it's going good. I'm thinking about opening a dog training school. Haven't yet, canonically, but I'm thinking about it. There a lot of money in that, you think? No. <laughs> I'm planning on losing <laughs> a lot of money that I hope to make on this voyage. <laughs> he says, I'm, I'm glad you found something to keep you busy, Magnus. I've been struggling that myself, if I'm being honest. I, I tried to find more sort of stuff I could help out with, but uh, it's just been me in the sea for a while, which is kind of how I like it. I, I kind of know that I'm playing the back nine, as it were. I'm a little too old to start over somewhere, so finding, finding some new life to lead just doesn't sound good to me right now. You all aren't having trouble readjusting now that we're sort of settling in? No. Oh. Just me, then. All right. 
Hey. You know, uh... Davenport. <laughs> I thought you'd forgotten. Some people take a while to find their thing, you know? Like, find their stride. Like, uh... The guy who wrote Moby Dick. That took him forever. A lot of words in that one. And that... That's the kind of thing, maybe you're just in the middle of your dick and you don't, and you don't, it'll take a while to find your stride, maybe. Maybe piracy was the wrong path and this is the universe's way of telling you, hey, go ashore. Become a land pirate. A land pirate. Not enough of those. Open a bait shop. Yeah, that sounds fulfilling. (laughs) There's somebody who owns a bait shop in here like, oh. But actually, I have, I have a lot of good conversations with fish people. It's... Uh, Orla, who's dining with you, speaks up and she says, uh, you know, I found my life on the sea too, Davenport. I, I lost my home. It was destroyed when I was just a child. And I found a new home on, on the ocean. That feeling when you look out on the horizon and there's nothing but endless water in every direction. That's... That can be home, too. Don't listen to these three clowns who are telling you to open a bait shop somewhere. To be fair, only one of us said bait shop. And it was me. Who? Clint McElroy on this boat? Amazing! Clint McElroy is the custodian on a completely different planet. (laughs) Uh, Davenport kind of shakes himself and puts on a smile. He says... All right, well, we should arrive at the wreckage at sunrise. You all should get some sleep. We got a big day ahead of us. Magnus does. Right there at the table. You retire from the galley to the sleeping quarters, except for Magnus, who just instantly falls asleep at the table. (laughs) And we drag his ass to his hammock. No, he is too heavy for that. He's sleeping at the table. Uh, Taco Taco and Merle, you find with this... Taco wakes up in the middle of the night, and he goes to Davenport's cabin. Okay. Hey, listen... Bad news. I think I've got scurvy. (laughs) I'm not sure what the signs of scurvy are. But I've been out here for what feels like 13 fucking years. And I'm... How would I know if I have scurvy? Well, what's your your symptoms, pal? Bored? (laughs) Salt taste? Salt taste. Salt. There's like a salty taste all the time. <laughs> so I'm bored and salt taste and some mild nausea. Can I, let me, show me those chompers. You're good. Really? Yeah. You can tell from the Remember teeth. Remember the teeth. Like a veterinarian. <laughs> I never, so there's the answer, I guess. Well, thanks anyway. Sorry to wake you. No. No, no problem. Do you have any limes, though? As long as I'm here, I'm, I'd hate to go back empty-handed. I got or a, empty citrus. <laughs> I got a grapefruit. Did you roll to see if you had a grapefruit? He has a grapefruit. <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't love grapefruit. You got to put some salt. Wait. No, this is Travis. You got to put some Magnus salt Magnus is just there. <laughs> She's been standing in the door the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry to wake you. I'll take the grapefruit and try to muscle up the courage to take a nibble. <laughs> Maybe uh, it's a juice in case of emergency situation. I'll just keep it on a shelf. It's the following morning. <laughs> you all awaken in the different rooms you slept in for some reason. Uh, and head above deck and see the site described by Orla the previous evening. There's no land in sight, just infinite ocean in every direction. Magnus loses it. Uh-oh. I, I thought Magnus but, was a sailor boy But now. then he's okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a rich bit that was. He's like... <laughs> ah, how's this? Merle starts to puke. Okay. Yeah. There is one point of interest that breaks up this vista of endless ocean, though. Directly in front of your ship, you see a few planks of wood stitched together to form a makeshift raft. Slumped over it and clinging to the side of this piece of wreckage, you see a hooded figure with its head down, seemingly passed out cold. What do you do? Ahoy! (laughs) Ahoy! (laughs) Ahoy! Uh, uh, I'm gonna roll a. How far away are we? Uh, you're a good fifty feet away. Uh, it does not respond to your ahoys. 
asshole. Uh, I'll run. I'll. Uh, you know what? I'm going to do a perception check to see if I sense anything else. Okay. There and uh, see if I can pick up any other details. And we are looking at a 19. With a 19, you your eagle elven eyes peer into the distance, and uh, you get a better look at the shape of this figure slumped over the raft, and you see that its hand is a skeletal hand, and that it is moving a little bit. Oh, well, my here's the bad God. news. Magnus has already leapt over the side to go save this person. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to execute a perfect dive. I no, think, you're not. Well, what, is that athletics? Is that athletics swimming? Yes. That's a 19. Uh, good dive, dude. Was Real it a foon? Did you do no, a foon? No, it was a it perfect was a dive. Sick ass a dive. Single, a single drop of water just whoop. And you swim over to the raft? And I leap out of the water like a dolphin and land upon the raft. All right. You dolphin swim through the water and leap up on the raft as the uh, Davenport ship continues at speed towards it. Uh, And what do you do? You're at the raft. Hello, friend. It uh, looks up at you. This shape does. And it is, in fact, totally a skeleton with a bright gold tooth. I've met skeletons before. It slashes at you with a dagger at its waist. Hey, I get it. I know you're a little stressed out right now, my man. Stuck out of your arms, but we can be five five skeletal friends. That's a 24 versus AC. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Ow. Listen, I get it. You're mad. I've changed a lot in the last year. It buries a crooked knife in your shoulder for 14 points of damage. Damn. That's nothing. I don't know. I know we probably should roll initiative, but I'm just going to. It's... Half and like it's a jack kind of situation, right? Like I'll never let go. It's off the raft in the water, right? It's like clinging to the side of the raft. Yeah. I'm gonna punt it. Okay. (laughs) No, you're not. Well, it's a 13. No. It uh, grabs your ankle in midair and uh, slashes. No. Yeah, it, that'll just probably happen. Is. It's good. It's but do it for the vine. Do it for the vine. It only rolled a thirteen on its attack at you. So okay, you don't so it missed. Yes. Uh, I just probably have something. It's good to let the vines happen sometimes, Travis. Yeah, it I can know. be better for the drama to do this it for the vine. raft that you're standing on. Uh, it explodes, knocking you uh, backwards up into the air and then down into the ocean. Uh, and Merle and Taco, you see from behind you on the deck of Davenport's ship, you see Orla holding her ship's cannon with smoke coming out the end. Nice. I, whoa, write it down, everybody. We finally got saved by a competent woman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Davenport walks out of the captain's quarters and throws you a life uh, ring. What are those? Life preserver uh, as he floats by. Uh, and fishes Magnus back up into... He was a skeleton! He says, yeah. Were we supposed to... I thought it was somebody we knew. Was it somebody we... Not everything's a callback. Not every character is going to be a callback. Okay, all right, that's cool. (laughs) The gold tooth kind of threw me. Do you know Joe Pesci from Home Alone? Like, what's the fucking... (laughs) Davenport says, okay, so, confession time... I haven't been completely honest with you all about why I brought you out here today. Uh Uh-huh. So first off, and someone please be ready to catch Taco as he faints. There's no sunken treasure. Taco faints. (laughs) Nobody catches him. No, I rolled a 15. Of course you did. Dexterity uh, plus to do a 17. Easy catch. Thank you so much. Silver lining, though, your buddy Davenport isn't racked with debt, so that's something, at least. So are we just, oh, it's a picnic. No. He says, there's an undead pirate ship that tried to destroy my boat while I was out here just a few days ago. I was just minding my own business. It came along and was just like, and... I managed to escape, and I, I met Orlo while I was drowning my sorrows back at Westbreak. Apparently, this ghost ship's brought down several dozen other non-ghost ships over the last year or so. So I know I said my days of heroism were behind me, but 
That's just not going to fly, personally speaking. I wouldn't leave something like that out here, potentially endangering other oceanic explorers like myself who are just trying to find some peace and quiet out here. So I brought you all in to help me take it down. And I'm sorry for lying. I just haven't spoken to you all in a while, and I didn't know if I could count on you to still be in the, in the hero business. Could have asked. Merle cast Cure Wounds. Why? Oh, on me? The idea of Travis be- Magnus being healed is just so alien to Travis. Yes, he got stabbed, right? What's Cure Wounds to? Cure Maybe. Wounds, of course, Griffin. Get comfortable. A creature you touch regains a number of hit points equal to 1d8 plus your spellcasting ability modifier. Go ahead and roll 1d8 for me. 1d8. You got it. First try. That's it. 1d8. It's a one. A juicy, juicy. Actually, that's a seven. That's oh, a, it's seven. a seven? Yeah. yeah. All right. Ah, what language is this? It's a seven plus my spell casting modifier. Which is five or six. So we'll say full health Magnus. Um, You're freaking welcome. Okay, but listen, though. Don't applaud him during the bare minimum, please. I do want to say I went from... 131 hit points to 117 to 131. So I had a boo boo and he makes <laughs> it. <laughs> and yeah. to be honest with you, I was really casting it on Taco to wake him up. <laughs> and you kind of hijacked my move. <laughs> the feigning is not a wound. Well, I guess this is the time to talk about how I hadn't lost any hit points. I was literally, the only damage that could have been done to me was the fall, and I was literally caught. Yeah, if I caught him too hard, I guess. Oh, that's, well, that's ten points of catching damage. I'm glad I cast it on Magnus, then. Davenport says, anyways, we're all here now with this pirate situation, whether we like it or not. And uh, speaking of, battle stations. And he points off the starboard side of the ship, and you all see the waters below start to part. And in the gap that forms, a shape emerges in the water. It's a crow's nest, followed by a tattered sail of translucent cloth, and then another sail, and a third. And then you see an entire boat rise from the waters and splash down ten feet off the side of your ship. This vessel is made of rotted gray wood and covered in barnacles, and yet the whole vessel seems to be coated in this shimmering, sickly green light. Yar, it's Davy Jones! This boat also eclipses your own. It stands about eight feet higher in the water, and it's nearly twice as long as Davenport's wave humper. And over the railing of the side of the ship, you see a skeleton peek out and give you all a friendly wave, and a voice shouts, Hello, my name's Captain Calloway, and I'm so sorry for the inconvenience. Ahoy! Ahoy, of course. Where are my manners? Ahoy, 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 ahoy. Ahoy, ahoy. No, I'm, I'm asleep. Sorry. Uh, we're going to need to take your ship and kill all of you so we can dragoon you into our undead fleet. We'll try to make it quick and painless, but I, that's, listen, it's I, hard to I'm, guarantee. Um, it'd be actually really cool, honestly, if you could just drop anchor and wait to be murdered. Uh, he is very nice. I will, I'll tell you what, you seem very nice. You have one chance to surrender. Oh, man. I, listen, I know. Cross Is this purposes. Is a talking skeleton? Yeah. That's so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it is if you think about it. Because <laughs> where's the air and the vocal cords and stuff? Where's the air and the stuff? vocal cords and, and stuff? And is there a tongue? How do you make you know, your umlauts right. and stuff? Thank you. Without the lips or the tongue, you just have the teeth. Yeah. He chatters in a wild <laughs> rhythm that makes the words, no. Are you sure? Yeah. Because it's our podcast. No. We're actually doing our own podcast. <laughs> the, bo- he, he the, tried- bone <laughs> the bone zone. The bone zone. He... He turns to his crew and says, They're not just going to let us murder them. It looks like we have to f- do a fight. Let's roll for initiative with that climactic. <laughs> Jim J. Bullock delivery. Wow. 19. Whoa. And, a- and 11. Uh, Taco, what'd you roll? 
I'm fainted. Go ahead and roll initiative, though, please. Okay, I wake up. <gasps> scurvy vapors. Bad I was news. healing him from scurvy. Sure. <laughs> Don't have scurvy. I have a six on that one. Uh-oh. That's not six very good. Six for you your boy You have a plus hoops. three, so it's a nine. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> the first thing that happens, a long plank of wood with spikes on the bottom of it raises up from the deck of the ghost pirate ship and slams down into the deck of Davenport's boat, the Wave Humper, uh, with a terrible crash. And five skeleton crew members come pouring down the gangplank onto your ship, and they all take a swing at Magnus. They act as a swarm, which means I roll as one sort of thing for them. That is a 19 versus AC. That's a miss. Oh, that's cool. You easily brush off five skeletons <laughs> as they swing their scimitars at you, or their cutlasses, their cut lie at you. You parry them effortlessly, uh, and they look very confused because the odds of that happening are just <laughs> wild. Uh, next in the order is Merle. Uh, Merle casts Guiding Bolt okay. at Galloway. Callaway. Callaway, uh, the golfing pirate. So that's, um, that's a sports reference. No, I got it. Okay, I didn't know. Uh, 4d6 radiant damage. Well, you have to roll the hit first. Right. 16. Uh, that's a hit on Captain Callaway. Thank you. Uh, just roll one. Is that Father's Day pity? What? Uh, you got that D6 there? Roll Which, one. I got a D6. Okay. It's, it's kind of on a fold. Maybe I ought to roll it again. No, you said two? Yeah. Two. Right. Four, four D6 is what you yep. can roll those. Okay. God, these are heavy. Yeah, they're metal. Travis is getting yoked over there. God while almighty. He rolled three ones and a two. Holy shit. <laughs> Unbelievable. Statistically, the second worst he could have done. Sure. I now, suck at this game. It is, ra- it is radiant damage, though, so instead of just five, it's ten points of damage. So that's something. Nice. And I have advantage on my next attack roll. Oh, cool. Okay. Uh, you're not going to remember that. Uh, and... <laughs> Uh, your bolt uh, emerges as you uh, read from the Extreme Teen Bible, and it just kind of hits Captain Calloway, and he was like, okay. Uh, next in the order is, oh, uh, you hear a mechanical sound coming from the ghost pirate ship as a panel on the ghost pirate deck opens up, and from uh, your position on Davenport's boat, you see what looks like a hot air balloon start rising up from the ghost pirate ship, tethered to their ship with a long rope. Uh, and as it raises up 20 feet into the air, you see uh, attached to the bottom of this balloon a ship's cannon, which launches a big cannonball at the three of you. Uh, roll a dexterity saving throw. Mm, 12. It's taken a while. Oh, this right. one is a 22 for two boy hoops. Thank you. I did not play a large role in the outcome. It was Six, uh, 16. Uh, and Merle, you rolled a 12. All right. Uh, Magnus and Taco, you both dive out of the way with grace and ease. I rolled twice because I have the tooth necklace. Merle, you are struck with a cannonball. I picture it as like the three of us are standing in a row. And it goes, Magnus, Taco, Merle? (laughs) Yeah. Uh, It actually lands at your feet, hitting you with uh, a fiery explosion and splinters of wood that come up from the deck of Davenport's ship for 24 points of damage. Jeez. Hey, you cool? Yeah, it's a fucking cannon, guys. Come on. Uh, next in the order is Magnus. Um, how, how close is the ghost ship to our ship? Ten feet away. You have a gangplank. I'm going to jump to it. You got a gangplank connect. Okay. But there's five shellings sure. in the way. There's a, hey, 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 hey. There's probably a rope you could swing on. Uh. I do that. Okay. Um, that's a 17. You swing, and it's cool. (laughs) And I land right next to Callaway. Sure. 
and I attack him. How many times? Six. (laughs) No, no, right now, just the three. No, wait, just two. Okay. What are you attacking him with? Uh, The Flaming Rage of Poisoning Sword of Doom. That's a seven. Oh, sorry, 17. Yeah. Shit. One of these live shows, I'm going to make a demon take it or something. I think a demon. Well, I only rolled a two, so that's only 26 points of damage. We played the Stream of Many Eyes game, and Travis played. And when it finally got to his turn, he took one battle turn that literally, they literally turned and said, well, what does your character do? And 20 minutes later, when he wrapped up his turn, (laughs) Uh, they were all gaping at him. And then I rolled a 24 attack. Yeah, of course. Uh, And a 27 damage. So that's 53 total. Wait a minute. He may not be done. A lot of, lot of his bones come off. <laughs> Just a lot He's of de-boned. a lot of discarded bones on the ground. Uh, and then with my third attack, shit birds. I told you. I told you. I'm gonna throw the chance lance at the cannon operator. Or the uh, cannon. It's just a balloon. It's floating in the air. Uh, pop it, pop at the it, balloon. Pop it. Okay. There's no operator as far as you can see. It's magic. It's a 19. Yep. So, the, okay, I guess the balloon will take some damage. Um, 12 it damage. It pops. It's a balloon. Yeah, it pops. I, 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 that's why I was confused. <laughs> you have solved his balloon mystery. Oh, uh,. The balloon pops, and the cannon falls and plunges into the, uh, the deck of the ship. And it keeps on going, and you hear it hitting a lot of wood. Uh, just sort of keeping on, it's just going. It sounds like it's going to maybe go into the mantle of the earth uh, that you are standing on. Uh, you also hear it hit water uh, as it falls. I just imagine Callaway and I standing there going, ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> With his four remaining bones. Uh, Next in the order is Orla, uh, who takes her cutlass and engages with the uh, swarm of skeletons. uh, And she uh, engages with one in particular, and there's a cool duel, uh, and she cuts off its head as it falls to the ground. There are now four remaining skeletons on the ship. Next in the order is Taco. Um, I hide behind the edge of our ship. Okay. And I chew a piece of Mockingbird gum. And I impersonate Captain Calloway as I call out, We're beaten, boys. It's time to get out of here. <laughs> the, the four remaining skeletons look around like, Well, where do you want us to go? Everyone in the water. Your move, Griffin. <laughs> Make a check. You're going to need a check for this one. I got the gum. But you... I have the gum. <laughs> it's good gum. You'll have advantage on it. Uh, what's the... I always I fucking pers- fuck this up. Deception. Make a deception, deception check for me. That's a, that one's a two on that. So you have advantage. Not good. And a... Ten. So it sounds more like this. Hey, everybody. <laughs> hey, like- let's all jump in the water. Come on. Come on. Yeah, they do it. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're dumb skeletons. Sure. Uh, they all just jump right in. They gather up the bones of the defeated skeleton brethren and uh, all five of them jump into the water between the two ships. The ghost pirate ship is now sinking uh, into the water as the cap- as the uh, cannon sort of pierced through it. So in a sense, my- <laughs> it was the most humane thing I could do in this scenario. <laughs> they were in fact beaten and they should in fact retreat. 
Uh, the water is almost up to uh, the deck of the ship, Magnus, uh, where you and Calloway are standing. And Calloway says, well, uh, I can see that I'm beaten. Boy, that didn't take very long. <laughs> uh, and he takes a step towards the mast. And on the mast, there is a bell. Uh, which he grabs the ringer for and rings the bell, which is what you do with a bell. Um, And it makes a sickening low noise, much lower than the size of the bell would make you think it would make. (laughs) Fuck me. Tell me more about the bell. (laughs) Let's not rush. Can you... Like recreate it? For yeah, us? like I think yeah, it's sure, gotta make sure, like sure. a ding, ding, wait, wait, ding. No, nah, I think it would be more resonant. Be like, dong along along. <laughs> right on. Uh, the sound rings out uh, into the distance uh, and continues until it is consumed by the waters. Uh, Magnus, you are just kind of in the water now as the ghost ship sinks below, taking Captain Calloway and the rest of the crew down with it. I grappling hook up to the ship. Wait, I have a, sp- I have a spell! Hold on, wait. He grappling hooks up to the ship. Uh. There's a second act, uh, and the sound of this bell is continuing in the air even though the ghost ship is consumed. And suddenly, the waters behind your ship part once more. And another ghostly vessel rises from the water. And then two more behind it in formation. And then three more behind it. Within moments, an entire fleet of ghost ships, dozens of them, are pursuing your boat, all crewed by dozens of cackling skeletons, thrilled at the opportunity to engage in some good old-fashioned piracy. Amidst their laughter, you hear a strange sound come from close by. Here's another sound effect for you, Dad. It sounds like... Caw! Caw! Perched on the railing of Davenport's ship is a raven, a bird not historically known for oceanic expeditions. And then a second raven lands immediately adjacent to the first and joins in the chorus. Then we see a shadow cast over your faces as hundreds of ravens appear, which uh, fly immediately uh, down, down towards your ship, crashing into the deck of the wave humper. And as the ravens fly off, three robed familiar figures appear in front of you. The one, the one in the center pulls out a scroll and begins reading. It says, Undead abominations, by, by decree of the Raven Queen, we formally charge your fleet with... Taco... <laughs> What are you doing here, babe? (laughs) That's the end of Act One. (laughs) We'll be back with more. Hey, everybody, this is Griffin McElroy, your dungeon master, your best friend, and the and the Hamburglar. Rubble, rubble, it's been me all along. There is a lot of stuff to talk about uh, for this ad spot, and so I just want to get into it very quickly. Before I do, I have to say an enormous thank you to everybody who picked up our graphic novel adaptation of Here There Be Gerblins, the first arc from Balance. Um, Those who who went out and bought it that first week, if you could find it. Uh, Those who pre-ordered it because of you. uh, If you haven't already seen the news on Twitter or anywhere else, uh, we made number one on the New York Times bestseller list for uh, paperback fiction. Uh, I think like number three for overall. It's 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 fucking wild. It is uh, it is genuinely beyond belief, and we uh, I, I appreciate you all so so much uh, that that you went out and supported us so much. It's it's absolutely remarkable, and uh, just thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, if you if you haven't read it yet, um, we're we're just I'm just really happy with how it turned out. You can find a copy uh, and and order it and do whatever at you know your local book bookstores or at theadventurezonecomic.com. But yeah, thank you all so much. So uh, our first sponsor this week is Quip. Hey, did you know that you're probably brushing your teeth incorrectly? Yeah, it's not your fault. Most brands uh, focus on selling flashy gimmicks rather than better tooth brushing, but not Quip. They make good toothbrushes. They are the new electric toothbrush that is a fraction of the cost of bulkier brushes, uh, but... 
they also pack premium vibrations for a perfect two-minute clean. I'm talking about those good vibrations. Plus, Quip's guiding pulses remind you when to switch sides, and they'll deliver new brush heads on a dentist-recommended schedule every three months for just five bucks, including free shipping worldwide. Quip starts at just 25 bucks, and if you go to getquip.com slash adventure right now, you'll get your first refill pack free with a Quip electric toothbrush, spelled G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash adventure. Get on it. So you got your teeth looking all right. How about uh, your wrist? How about your um, eye eye area? Well, for that, you want to turn to movement. Movement, or MVMT, continues to revolutionize fashion on the belief that style shouldn't break the bank. They've expanded from watches to sunglasses and fashion-forward bracelets, too. Uh, they start at just $95, their, their watches, too. At a department store, you're looking at like 400 to 500 bucks for a nice watch. Movement figured out by selling online, they were able to cut out the middleman and retail markup, providing the best possible price. Uh, classic design. They got quality construction. They got style minimalism. I have a couple, uh, one one of which I wear uh, pretty much every time I leave the house, and I've, I've gotten compliments on it, uh, which is always makes you feel like I'm very just a fancy lad. Anyway, you can get 15% off today with free shipping and free returns by going to movement.com slash adventure. See why movement keeps growing. Check out the expanding collection. Go to movement.com. That's M-V-M-T dot com slash adventure and join the movement. Got a couple jumbotrons here. This uh, first one is for Judd Eder or Eder, probably Eder. Eh... Now I'm waffling, but I'm going to say Judd Edder, and it's from the Rum Buddies, who say, I've got a plan. Let's tuck talk to thank Judd for getting us into D&D. Uh, you gave us two boats, Larry the f- Talking Shrub, Otto the Modron, and lots of fun in a great campaign. From Archer, Barnabas, Cudge, Hawk, Joppa, Tuck, and Kevin Hogchopper. Damn, that's good. Thank you. When Trent Reznor threatens Aura's dream... Someone has to save existence. Rum Buddy's got to do it. Sounds like your own sort of promotional tagline for your homebrew D&D campaign, and I am just all, all about that. I have another uh, Jumbotron here. This one's for Courtney, Gianna, Nick, Charlene, Claire, Krista, Christian, Fire Nick, and Bill. Uh, and it's from Michael, who says, Hello, armchair adventurers. I want to thank all of you for being amazing, wonderful, good, good friends. You make my world better, and I appreciate you all very much. I also wanted to use this time to have the brothers settle our longest-running debate. Would Winnie the Pooh be an amazing roommate? The answer is, of course, yes. Um, well, you're only going to get my opinion on this, but I'm going to go ahead and say Yes, I've definitely had, uh, you know, worse roommates who were definitely needier than just like, I need me a pot of honey every like week or so. Um, I don't know how, how quickly Winnie could like down a, a, a big jar of honey, but um, I, I'm, if that's all that you need to keep your roommate sort of uh, satisfied, then um, I, 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 th- I think there are worse crosses to bear. So uh, it's, a, it's a hard yes from, from me. So thank you all so much for tweeting about the show using the, the ZoneCast hashtag. If you do that, you might, uh, you might end up as a character in the show. We're about to start a new arc of the Adventure Zone Amnesty uh, coming up here in two weeks. Uh, so there will be plenty of character names for that. But also, we just really appreciate you spreading the word. Uh, it, it, it really means a lot to us, and it's how we've uh, been able to sort of get this really nice, rad audience that we have now. Um, oh, I recently put up uh, all of the music so far from the Adventure Zone Amnesty, as well as the themes for the experimental arcs, uh, Commitment, Dust, and Elementary. How could I forget Elementary? That one was Justin's uh, theme song. Of course, all of that is available in one album called The Beast and the Water, and it's available on my Bandcamp page, uh, griffinmacroy.bandcamp.com. Uh, and all sales through August 1st for that album and uh, all the music on my Bandcamp, which is all the music from the Adventure Zone, uh, uh, all those sales are going to be donated to races. So, uh, yeah, it's 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 a good time for you to go and pick it up. It's it, Everything is pay what you want. So, uh, again, it's griffinmacroy.bandcamp.com. Uh, thank you to Maximum Fun for having us on the network. You can go to MaximumFun.org and check out all the great shows there. Shows like Stop Podcasting Yourself uh, and the new sort of sci-fi comedy fiction show Bubble, which is a, a super, super good show uh, that I have been listening to. And uh, there's there's still new episodes coming out all the time. And we were recently on one. Uh, I think it was episode six or so. So go go, go give that one a shot. It's a, it's a, it's a really good show. And... Um, I think that is probably it. I'm going to let you get back to the rest of the live show now, and we will be back with a new episode from the Adventure Zone Amnesty, the first episode of a new arc, uh, in two weeks, which will be Thursday, August 9th. So I'll talk to you then. Bye. All right. 
Kravitz, Loop, and Barry are standing in front of you at the bow of... Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. You spent that entire intermission like... I'd sit there, I was on my phone saying, oh, God, crows, and why? Raven. Adventure Zone. Oh, Raven, that's why I couldn't find the them. Three, <laughs> the three of them are standing in front of you at the bow of Davenport's ship, dressed in their full Raven Queen regalia. As the three of them realize the situation, Kravitz drops his skeletal facade, and the three of them rush towards your party. Kravitz gives you a warm embrace, Taco, and says, No, no, seriously, Taco, what are you doing here? Babe, I told you I was having a boys' weekend. (laughs) I I put it on my G-Cal, you know I did. I thought that meant like you'd go out to, you know, Reno and play the tables. I didn't think... We're you'd... doing that after. So is Reno canon now? It's Reno... Oh, gosh. Reno winter. Yes. <laughs> uh, Loop says, So, uh, Davenport, bud, kind of curious why you uh, decided to come back out here after you wrote us about all the ghost-based dangers you encountered, my man. Didn't you consider that we'd be coming to collect for, you know, the goddess of death? And uh, Davenport says, I'll be honest, I kind of (laughs) forgot that y'all were doing that these days. I've been on the sea, you see. The ocean makes you forget things. And Barry says, well, no worries. We'll take it from here. You all just head back home. We'll clean up and uh, meet you back at West Break for a celebratory round of drinks. Shouldn't take us more than five minutes. Yeah, any help you want to provide would be absolutely astounding. Thank you. Yeah, we'd like to, I mean, we're, can I be honest? Hey. Barry says, yeah, yeah. Since that whole thing where, like, we saved not only this universe, but all universes. Spoiler alert. Yeah. <laughs> I've been bored. Could we stay and fight the skeletons, please? Loop and Barry start hovering off the deck of the ship uh, in this cloud of black smoke and addressing you, Magnus, as they soar off. Loop says, you'll just get in the way! <laughs> <laughs> and Kravitz says, seriously, five minutes. We'll, we'll be right back. And he takes off in a cloud of smoke also. Okay, who's feeding the cats? <laughs> <laughs> He <laughs> I just picture skeleton cats. He yells, Susan! I hate Susan, you know that. You don't have to like her for her to feed the cats! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, from behind you, Orla clears her throat. She says, your friends seem very capable, but taking down this fleet, it's a, a futile effort. They'll, these aren't like the undead you've faced before. They're not the defiled husks of fallen adventurers lying in wait in some dungeon. They were, they were turned. They were made that way by something that lurks fathoms beneath us this very moment. It's the same thing that destroyed my ship and killed my crew. It's an elder god called the Kraken. And in one swift movement, she draws her cutlass and drags it against her palm and flicks a few drops of blood over the side of the boat. (laughs) Storm clouds gather from every direction as a peal of thunder matches the sound of ghost ships exploding in the melee behind you. Waves rise up from the waters in an instant like goosebumps appearing on flesh. The boat lurches to the side and Davenport springs up the stairs towards the wheel attempting to keep the boat level. Orla removes the cannon from her back and kneels, refilling a chamber with black powder from a flask on her hip and says, We have mere moments to prepare. You should spend them wisely. Why didn't you say that before? (laughs) Why didn't you be like, Hey, I'm about to do a thing. Do you need time? She said, She says, uh, if you knew what was coming, you would have turned and ran in it. To where? We're on a boat! (laughs) The back of the boat, (laughs) which is the... Okay. Don't, please. (laughs) I can't. I am 
uh, going to cast uh, water breathing on our entire crew. Okay. Just a little insurance. Do you tell people you're doing that? No, it'll be a fun surprise. (laughs) You all feel gills appear on your neck. Two massive tentacles splash upward from the starboard side of the boat. Uh, One teeters towards the boat and wraps itself around the mast at the center of the ship just a few feet away. Two more spring upward from the port side, one entwining the figurehead on the prow. From beneath the pitch black waters, now slapping at the bottom of your boat below, you hear an otherworldly howl. Are we to assume this is the Kraken? No, this is some other big octopus. You have four tentacles, two of which are entwining your boat. We're back up to the top of the order with Merle. So that's only really half an octopus. The other four are doing other things. (laughs) Oh, okay. Because, I mean, a four-legged octopus is a horse. (laughs) Stupid. Stupid thing to say. (laughs) Dumb joke. Is it it stupid? (laughs) Well, no one's ever looked at a horse and said, that's like half an octopus. <laughs> okay, but if you put two horses and glued them yeah, together, no, I get it. It, it would kind of look like an octopus, <laughs> sure. Yeah. Dumb. Sometimes I'm just too deep. Dumb, <laughs> stupid, stupid podcast. Merle. Merle, you're up. You got uh, one tentacle entwining the mast, one on the figurehead, and two more floating in the ocean. Uh, one to the starboard side, one to the port. What do you do? Um, Merle casts, uh, water walk. What's... Yeah. Seems a bit sacrilegious to give that one to a cleric. But, uh, go ahead and hit me. This spell grants the ability to move across any liquid surface, such as water, as if it were harmless, solid ground. Uh, yeah... Up to, t- oh, okay. We can all do, oh, we can all walk on water. We all walk on water. All right, sure. Fuck it. Uh, that is your turn. Next in the order is Magnus. Well, can we describe it at least? How cool it looks? We're I mean, you're on a boat, boat right now, so. Oh, but it'll get there, right? <laughs> yeah. Be ready. As soon as we start walking on water, you know who did it. It's not going to happen. Magnus, you're up. I attack a tentacle? By see, walking over to it? On the on boat the surface. Uh, you got one on the mast, one on the figurehead, and two floating in the water. Which one do you attack? I'd attack the one in the water. <laughs> I'm going to attack the one on the mast. It seems like the easiest one to reach. Yep, sure. Go for it. I mean, uh, I guess it's with the broken uh, weapon. 15? Oh, no. You didn't hit it. What about a 26? Yeah. I mean, you're going to add 20 fucking damage to it, 29. Yeah. Uh, You cleave right through it with the flaming, raging, poisoning sort of doom. A spurt of gross green fluid comes flying out of the severed tentacle as it falls to the deck of the ship, and the rest of the tentacle retreats. There are now three tentacles. Now, Griffin, I I know you're the DM, and I I don't normally challenge your authority. (laughs) When the tentacle, a tentacle was wrapped around the mast. How did I miss it with a 15? It was too strong. Your attack bounced (laughs) off like a child. Like a child swinging a wiffle ball bat at a flagpole. Like a weak fucking child. Fair play. Is that it? Yeah. Oh, shit. Uh, Next in the order is... Uh, the octopus. Uh, the two tentacles that are floating free, one of them is going to try to slam down on Merle. It was confused by the spell that it, he casts. It was afraid of how powerful it was. <laughs> it rears up into the air and comes down. That's just a 15 versus AC? Yeah. No, it's a miss. <clears throat> it's a miss. Yeah. Uh, it comes down uh, on you and you... Hold up your Bible and deflect it in the air. Uh, Can I open it? Sure, yes. 
Beautiful. These are available out in the lobby. They're not. They're not? No. No. Uh, the, this is only mine. The other one, uh, the other one swings down and tries to uh, grab uh, Magnus. Uh, that is a twenty-one versus AC. Where's the tie? What's the tie? Uh, tie goes to the attacker. But you are uh, grappled. It crushes you in its grasp. Uh, oh, that's not bad. It's 11 points of damage. Yeah. Uh, but you are grappled. I sneeze. But you are grappled in this tentacle's grasp and lifted up above the deck of the ship. Uh, next in the order is Taco. First things first, I dig into my bag as a free action and pull out the cloak of the manta ray. <laughs> Uh, it's covered in cobwebs. Yeah. Uh, that allows me the ability to breathe underwater. A little bit of a... Uh, a lot of sort of water-based buffing redundancy. so far. We're just not... so excited to finally have the chance to use them. Sure. But I can also uh, swim at 60 uh, feet per second. Oh, beautiful. So. Okay. Uh, but I'm not going to do that right now. Right now, I'm going to cast on the dumb squid... Who is not the Kraken? Is that what we established? Is that canonical, or is this is the Kraken? It is. It is the you Kraken. said it was another big squid, so I wasn't. And a sure. squid I was is being it? a jackass. It's the Kraken. <laughs> well, then on the Kraken, I'm going to cast Otto's Irresistible Dance. <laughs> this spell is fucking broken. I'm going to cast that on a creature I can see within range. It will begin a comic dance in place. Shuffling, tapping its feet, and capering <laughs> for the duration of a minute. It has to use all its movement to dance, and it cannot leave its space, and has disadvantage on dexterity saving throws and attack rolls. While the target is affected by the spell, other creatures have advantage on attack rolls against it as it dances. As an action, a dancing creature may make a wisdom saving throw to regain control of itself. And on a successful save, the spell ends. Do you have to attack me, or do I roll to resist it at it first? It is a... Uh, I think it's a... Nope. Oh, shit. Okay. Just the, wor- it just worked. The remaining tentacle that's wrapped around the uh, prow of the ship just unspools, uh, and then... Uh, fuck, man. Yep. I, I hate to ask to introduce the idea, but... Is one of the tentacles that's holding Magnus just dancing around holding Magnus? Yeah. <laughs> Win-, <laughs> Win some, lose some. All three of the remaining tentacles, including the one holding Magnus, uh, reach up into the air and start doing the electric slide. It's electric! Yeah, so they just start sliding back and forth in the water sort of rhythmically. Magnus, you're getting whipped around back and forth. It's a violent dance. Uh, But the ship has become uh, ungrappled entirely, and uh, you realize that it's good that that uh, is is the case because it was slowing down significantly, and the remaining ghost ships behind you were starting to catch up. Uh, But now you are not in danger of the ships behind you catching up. We are back to the top of the order. Merle, what's up? Uh, Merle cast Control Water. (laughs) A little unnecessary. Oh, is it? No, Travis giving me the bird. (laughs) Oh, as if he was... Let me see it again. Wait, wait. No, no, no. No, I think Travis even now realizes it was uncalled for. (laughs) It was a real older brother, not cooperative podcaster move. What does Control Water do? Merle can... (laughs) <laughs> it makes spaghetti. What do you think control water does? <laughs> What's the fucking card say? Hoist on your own petard, pal. Until the spell ends, you control any freestanding water inside an area you choose that is a cube up to 100 feet on a side. You can choose from any of the following effects when you cast ocean. a spell. You can flood, which causes the uh, water Please level don't read every... There's eight paragraphs rise, in the spell description. There's, you can part the water... You can redirect the flow. You can make a whirlpool. You, you said you were doing that one. Yeah. It, uh, it requires a body of water at least 50 feet square and 25 feet deep. I think we got that. That's the ocean. 
You cause a whirlpool to form. Um, the whirlpool forms a vortex that is five feet wide at the base, up to five, 50 feet, five feet wide oh. at the base. I'm not even sure that would that this he would is notice. Well, no, this yeah, is no. great fucking audio. This though. is going to kill him, though. This will kill it. This is what you rule people want, right? You want me to read all the rules. Any creature or object in the water and within 25 feet of the vortex is pulled 10 feet towards it. Good. A creature can swim away from the vortex by making a strength athletics check against your spell save DC. TM, Wizards of the Coast. So, you've created a whirlpool. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Give him the finger again, Trav. Yeah. No. You're, you're on a fucking boat. <laughs> But I can walk on water. All right, we're doing this. <laughs> the waves beneath you, they move in a peculiar motion. Uh, maybe the, other, the rest of you don't quite understand what's going on as a whirlpool suddenly forms uh, right beneath the ship and octopus and all of it. Uh, and now you can not only see the three tentacles that were above the water, you see all seven of them remaining. Oh. Uh, and in the center, at the bottom of this whirlpool, being crushed by the water, go ahead and roll 2d8 uh, bludgeoning damage for me. It's the eight-sided die. Let's go ahead and hurt this uh, octopus. Seven. Six. All right. Plus something. No, I don't think so. Uh, (laughs) You see the body of the Kraken. It is enormous. It is larger than your ship with sickly pink skin, two beady glowing orange eyes, and a beak that is shrieking towards the heavens as this whirlpool forms around it, crushing it. Uh, There are now seven tentacles, and your ship uh, sees... Everybody on your ship sees this. Sorry, I'm trying to figure this out in real time. Uh, Everyone aboard your ship sees the body of this kraken as it looks over the edge of this whirlpool uh, on the ship. And then you don't really need to look over the edge anymore as the ship is then also pulled into the whirlpool. And you hear Davin go, What the fuck? As he jerks the wheel to the side, trying to keep the yacht afloat. You are close to the top of the 50-foot rim of this whirlpool uh, going down. Uh, Let's see, what the fuck else happens? Um, I think as it is crushed, it drops you, Magnus, uh, back down onto the boat. There are now seven tentacles just kind of all over, so please don't ask me which tentacle you're attacking at any given time. They are identical, and we're back up. They're identical tentacles? (laughs) Magnus, you are now up. I'm going to take control of the ship wheel and steer the shit out of it. No? I'm not going to do that. No, you can do that. It's just Davenport's going to be like... Okay, yeah, all right. <laughs> Davin, Davenport. He didn't says, have money troubles before. Davenport says, uh, I know about your, your proficiencies. It's just I'm the captain, and it feels like... Um, well, you can command. I'll let, listen, you can be captain and not you steer. Wanna do, uh, you want to do tradesies? Can I hold on to the flaming raging poisoning sword of doom? No! <laughs> <laughs> he says, that's the only way I'll do it. I'll let you steer the ship. You got to give me the sword of doom for a little bit. Okay. <laughs> on... On it's one te- condition. It's technically yep. mine. If you lose it. It's my sword. You die forever. Well, it's kind of my sword, so it's more up to me. He says, it's fine. Go ahead. He says, uh, yeah, I can, I can live with that. It's a big responsibility. And he is now wielding the flaming, raging, poisoning sword of doom. That's a roll initiative for Davenport. Nope. This is going to be weird. Oh, really? All right, you're steering the ship. What's up now? Uh, I rolled a 14 plus 4, 18. A what? To steer the ship. Yeah, you're steering it. Real good. Steering it real good. I'm trying to keep from getting pulled into the the whirlpool that Merle created. Uh, Yeah, no, you definitely have... uh, Oh, I know what I'm doing. Yeah. Orla, I'm going to bring the cannons alongside. She uh, gives you just a thumbs up and uh, lights a cigar <laughs> because it's about to get righteous. Uh, and she takes her, uh, her cannon that she has strapped to her back uh, and places it into position next to a few others. Uh, it starts loading them up with cannonballs. 
Uh, let's just do that now so we have some resolution to this action. She just runs down with a, 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 a lighter that she has lit, just like... And fires into the crowd of tentacles. Uh, she uh, blasts with four cannonballs outward. Uh, only three collide with tentacles, and they explode, leaving four remaining, getting us back on track for the fight. So you guys aren't fighting eight things at the same time. Uh, okay, next in the order is Taco. Yeah. Mm. So, you know what? We've come a long way. Why don't you describe the situation to me so we all know where we're all There's four tentacles remaining. Uh, Your ship is uh, trapped in a whirlpool, at the bottom of which is the body of the kraken, which is looking at you and howling with a gross beak. And Uh, with the steering, it's kind of going around. And there's tentacles in the water? Yes. Okay. And there's a whirlpool? Yes. Oh, my God. No, yeah, it's gotten hairy. (laughs) I grab... I grab the plank that the other ship used to attack us with the spikes on it. I pick it up and I stand on the edge of the boat and say, you don't know me. My name is Taco and I invented surfing. (laughs) And I leap, I leap off the boat on my spiked surfboard. Towards the remaining tentacles in the water. All right. Uh, I think on your rad trajectory being uh, pushed forward, it's like one of those uh, like surfing pools where the water's like shooting at you super fast, so you are able to just like fucking carve it, bro. Yeah, bro. Uh, you are able to get some good speed going. Yes, uh, bro. That's just your movement. What's your uh, what's your action now? Oh golly. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of thought that I that would have done it. You know what I mean? Kind of thought that I. I do like that your idea was not in any way to stop the kraken, but no, I, I just wanted to the carve. spikes. I I was Let's planning add. on carving over the legs with my spikes. Oh, sick. Okay, uh, make yeah. a just make a basic attack roll, uh, adding. <laughs> it's a natural twenty. Uh. <laughs> Uh, you're going to kill one of the tentacles, but why don't you describe what that looks like? Uh, Taco leaps off and the spike thing, and he grabs the edge of it, and he kind of bends it up. Just sort of a stylish maneuver. It's not necessary. And then he brings it back down, and he just carves right up the tentacle and, like, carves off of it, does a 900 off of it, Ooh. and he just shreds it right, right in half. It's, it's really gnarly. Perhaps tubular. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, it explodes, and it's totally sick. Indeed, indeed. Uh, Orla from the deck of the ship says, Who the fuck are you guys? <laughs> uh, next in the order is the octopus. Uh, two of the tentacles... Hmm, let's think. Uh, one of the tentacles comes crashing down. Well, I'll give you each one. Uh, Merle, one tries to slam down on you again. That's a two, so that's not going to work. Uh, another one comes crashing down towards Mac. Where are you at, Magnus? Are you still even on the fucking boat? Yeah, I'm steering. Oh, that's right. Uh, 18 versus AC? Miss. Okay. I don't know how that happened. It, you're steering a boat, not a hard target. Well, I'm wearing a giant slayer's ring, and I'm wearing armor, and I just got to go, what? <laughs> Uh, The third one is going to take a swipe and try to grapple Taco as he surfs down the water. And that is a 19 versus AC. Indeed. You are grabbed. Do you hold on to your your surfboard as you uh, are lifted up into the air? I think I do. Okay. Make a strength contest with this tentacle. Is sugar good? (laughs) Yeah. Uh, 13 plus, what's my strength? Zilch. <laughs> uh, I got a 16. Uh, you see the beak of the kraken open wide as this tentacle starts to move downward back into uh, its awaiting maw. Uh, it looks so ready for this. It looks real, real hungry. 
Uh, and as you are just inches away, you see a black cloud of smoke fly through the tentacle, and it explodes. <laughs> And you see Kravitz now in his reaper form, full skeletal face with his scythe uh, dripping with green ooze as he severs the tentacle and it (laughs) spasms and flings you back up into the air uh, and he catches your hand in his and gently kind of puts you back down and like, do you want me to put you back surfing or where do you... Where do you need to go right now? For question one, did you see the thing with the surfboard? It was rad, yeah. Thank you, yes. Very good. The boat is fine. I had my moment. (laughs) He says, you got it, and takes you back up to the boat. And you hear Loop in the distance like, uh, hey, hurry it up. There's still like eight more boats back here. Fuck. Yeah, no, it's it's not going good back there either. But uh, you all have this, this octopus situation taken care of? Have you tried using diplomacy? (laughs) Uh, and he flies back off Uh, next in the order we're back up to Merle Merle casts Bane on the three remaining tentacles what's that do? up to three creatures of your choice that you can see within range must make charisma saving throws how charming are these tentacles? whenever a target that depends on who you ask I'm banking on it not being (laughs) it's not no, no, no. It's not, it's not my thing. I'm just saying, making an observation. The target must roll a d4 and subtract the number rolled from the attack roll or saving throw. What? I don't know. This is going to... All right, so you have to make... You, the three tentacles have to make charisma saving throws. Do you not know this game? I got a seven for the tentacles, so they don't save. And now every time they attack, they... Roll a D4 D4 and and subtract subtract it. All right, let me get a D4. I didn't think I was going to be using one of these little guys. All right, I got one. Okay. Okay. Good stuff. Next in the order is Magnus. All right. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I forgot to roll for Davenport. (laughs) You, uh, the the ship is now sailing almost uh, uh, next to, right up against one of the remaining tentacles. Uh, we'll say two remaining tentacles because that clock is almost out of time. Uh, as you carve a path with the ship, Davenport uh, holds on to some netting on the side of the boat and taking the uh, flaming, raging, poisoning sword of doom in his hand, he says, this thing's super heavy. You could have given me a heads up. And as he says that, just kind of holding it outright, it just very slowly, just like, bloop, cuts through one and then bloop, cuts through the other. And he says, wow, this thing's Way too powerful. It's. I didn't even swing it. I just kind of held it out. And then the things just died as soon as it touched this utterly broken fucking item. It feels like God shouldn't allow something like this to exist in our universe. And you use this all the time. It's my main. That's pretty wild. It's I know. And then bloop, he cuts through the third one like, oh shit, I didn't even... I wasn't even paying attention that time. Wouldn't it be funny if Davenport dropped it? No. And you lost it forever? Then Davenport would be And you see Davenport's hand as it hits the third one open, and it falls. (laughs) But then he he reaches down real fast and catches it. like, well, that was pretty close, huh? And then a big bird flies down and grabs it from his... But then he grabs it back like, "Uh (laughs) uh-oh. He's going to cry. I am not. Next. But I would, and it's not, there's nothing wrong with crying. And technically, it's tacos. Technically, it's my sword. Next in the order is Magnus. What do you do? Taco ca- calls out, don't kill it. I have a plan. Yeah, we can hop out of initiative. Okay. Perfect. Do you I, have a, who has plans? Let's take a vote on plans. I'm just going to steer out of the whirlpool. Okay. It's Perfect. It's sucking you down. Mm. Yeah, but I'm really good at driving. <laughs> oh, but I have proficiency... Oh, that's better. Okay. You stay afloat in the whirlpool, start uh, going back up towards the top. Taco, what's your plan? I cast Dominate Monster on the Kraken. Fuck. There's a spell for everything. It's eighth level. I only have one, and I'm using it on this. Uh, I'm cast Dominate Monster on the Kraken. Okay. Uh, It's got to succeed on a wisdom saving throw. It won't. Well, go ahead and roll. Uh, 13? No, sir. 
Okay. It failed. So now it works for me. <laughs> and I leap into the water, swim to it with extremely fast speed, thanks to my radical cloak. I you jump out of the boat, actually, and as you hit the water, you just collide with it because yeah. of the spell that Merle cast. You, you cheer, hooray, my wonderful cloak, punk. You collide with the water and just kind of sl- right. crumple down the whirlpool. I stand up. Towards I du- your new pet. I stand up, I dust myself off, and I say, come on, we're going to go save my boyfriend. And I point it towards, I point it towards the remaining ghost ships. Me it, and my legless kraken ah, are coming to the rescue. But not for long. Okay. Merle casts regenerate on the kraken. Yes! Yes! Where a target's severed body members are restored. Yes! <laughs> you all have lost so many body so, parts during so this Merle Merle uses his tree arm to cast sure. regenerate on a crack and he just No, his met. tree arm is way more rad than his flesh arm. You befriend this kraken that you sort of slide down the whirlpool towards, and as you dominate it, it says... <laughs> and uh, you hop on its back, and it kind of starts trying to flop up the side of the whirlpool, Aww. but it's having trouble. But then you see a beam of light from the Extreme Teen Bible. Well, he's running along the water, Merle is, because he can walk on water. Yeah, let's get everyone in the water. Yeah, he's walking on water and running towards it, and holds it up and yells out the spell. And suddenly, all eight tentacles return to the Kraken, and it nods at you, never-ending story-wise. It... it <laughs> Does it pick up, I'm asking Taco this, does it pick up Merle also as it flies out of the whirlpool? No need for that, he can walk on water. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, We, uh, there are, there's one main ghost ship remaining. It is a dreadnought, the biggest ship of the fleet, crewed by dozens of skeletons alone in this one. And you see Barry, Loop, and Kravitz having a dang hard time taking it down. There's some big, burly skeletons on this one. Probably a couple. Two mummies. Oh, no! (laughs) Mummies! Oh, the worst! (laughs) Uh, And they are surrounded on the center of the boat uh, and then in the distance, they hear splash, splash, splash. And they turn and look behind them and see the shape of the kraken coming towards them with a figure silhouetted from behind by the sunset behind him, uh, flying towards the ship. Uh, and right before the kraken collides with the ship, Barry says, what the hell is that? And Kravitz says, That's the best damn pirate I've ever seen. (laughs) That's the end of the episode. Thank you all so much for joining us. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. Are stacks of unread books taking over your apartment? Do you constantly miss your train stop because you're caught up in reading? I'm Bria Grant. And I'm Mallory O'Mara. We party hard. And by party hard, we mean read books. So join us every Thursday on Reading Glasses, a Maximum Fun podcast about reading and book culture. Get more out of your reading life. We'll help you conquer your to-be-read pile. Get out of that book slump. And squeeze more reading time into your busy day. Learn Learn how how to to read read better. better. Wow, that was good. (laughs) Rolling. The 
The news today is terrible, so why not forget about it while listening to Jonah Radio uh, with Cash Hartzell. Hey, everybody. Featuring Neil Mahoney. Also me. This is a podcast where we play music submitted by a uh, listener. We hang out, we listen to new tunes, and uh, we take submissions at Jonah Radio, R-A-Y-D-I-O, at gmail.com. Come and check us out. We're here anyway. Yeah, we'll yeah. be here. So, and that's it. Back to your regularly scheduled uh, podcast. Yeah.